So you're looking to master one of the most OP legends in Apex? Let's waste no time and get you right to it. There's a lot to talk about with all of Valkyrie's abilities, so stick around, but let's start it off with one of the more notable items, the VTOL Jets. This is a jetpack that she can use to maneuver herself around in a very natural and free-flowing way that does open up a lot of options for creative playmaking. It's pretty basic in theory. The longer you hold the jets down, the more fuel you're gonna use. Rapidly tapping the jets on and off will also consume more fuel, but at the benefit of increased maneuverability. A thing the majority of players will want to change is the settings of the jetpack control on the gameplay tab. Most will feel that changing this from toggle to hold is the way to go. Having this on hold feels much more natural for most and it'll let you just release your jump key or button to start falling back to the ground. The VTOL jets are going to be the life force of Valkyrie and you'll want to do your best to at minimum save a little bit of fuel to get that quick boost out of trouble or to get to high ground. Speaking of taking high ground, a great tactic to keep yourself mobile is to climb at the end of your usage of the jetpack. Since you are unable to use any weapons, grenades, healing items, or other equipment while you are flying, and briefly after flying, climbing right at the end of using your jets bypasses a little bit of that hand animation and it will keep yourself more concealed from getting beamed by your enemies. Another pretty big thing to avoid as Valkyrie is to simply just not fly high. Flying further and further off the ground can have its advantages like getting more intel, but unless you are near cover, generally don't do this as you're completely opening yourself up to get shot and beamed by enemies. Backing this up even more so, right after you are finishing the use of the jets, Valkyrie kind of floats a little, and this movement is again pretty revealing. Like everything in life, it's somewhat situational. One scenario where this floating effect actually does come in handy is when you are falling from height. Falling from height gives most legends fall fatigue when they do hit the ground. This is basically the brief moment where your character smacks that ground and is unable to move because they did fall from height. Something Valkyrie can do to avoid this is just to tap her boosters right before she hits the ground. This will stop her from getting that brief moment of stun effect and let her continue on much faster. Like we previously mentioned, rapidly tapping the boosters does use a ton of fuel and you do need to be aware of how much you are using and how fast it is going down. It takes a few seconds before the fuel starts recharging, so if you are intermediately tapping the jets, your fuel really won't ever recharge. That being said, when you are in a tough situation, pretty much every player, including controller warriors, will be able to more or less tap strafe with Valkyrie's jetpack to get her out of tough situations or just break the enemy's ankles and fights. Rapidly tapping the jets in and around buildings is an insane way to evade fire and get safety to pop those heals or better yet make a creative play. And if you didn't know if you do get hit by some sort of stun ability or stun effect such as an arc star you can tap Valkyrie's jets to eliminate that stun effect and get you moving a little bit faster. Valkyrie's biggest tool in the fight is quick taps of the jetpack to drop from height, get some shots on enemies and then do a quick boost back up to that roof of that building or any other high area that the enemies can't easily get to. You can also do the reverse where you might be fighting on high ground, you more or less bait someone to jumping to the low ground, and then you actually just fly back up to the high ground, much like I did here in this Revenant at checkpoint on Stormpoint. Hear me out, Valkyries. The next one is a big one I see way too many newer or less experienced players falling into, and this is using her jetpack when you don't need to or when you are approaching a fight. The element of surprise is a crazy thing in Apex. If you tap your jetpack really anywhere within about 75 to 100 meters of a team, they are going to hear your approach. Sometimes just climbing is the best thing you can do to avoid detection. Don't give yourself away, your squad away, just because you are too lazy to climb an object. As you can see, lots of ways to use Valkyrie's passive jetpack, and if this wasn't enough, she still has two other parts of her passive ability. For one, she's a recon legend, meaning you can use those beacons around the map to see the next ring. Valkyrie also has the pretty unique ability to scan or tag enemies when flying in and when deploying with either her ultimate or on a balloon. These enemies are scanned based on line of sight. Players in buildings won't be targeted and additionally enemies are also scanned on the map. This is a really great way to make sure you aren't landing on an enemy team on accident and to better identify third parties. A little trick you may be unaware of is that the champion and kill leaders are also tagged both with the CH and a KL so be on the lookout for these markers. As we move on to the tactical ultimate abilities, ranking of Valk and more, check out the pinned comment down below for any changes to Valkyrie since the launch of this video, plus how she is performing in the meta of today. Valkyrie's future is definitely unknown at the moment as she is very strong, so I could see some adjustments in the near future. The Missile Swarm is her tactical ability, and this is a pretty strong ability just for a tactical. This sends out a cluster of 12 missiles that deal 25 damage to each enemy on the initial hit, an additional three or so damage per each additional rocket that does 
connect to enemies. This generally is going to do anywhere from 25 to 40 or so damage. And on top of that, it also stuns enemies much like an arc star. It has a quick 35 second cooldown and it can be fired up to 100 or so meters away, depending on your elevation in relation to your enemies. This is an ability that should be used more times than not, as it's great to farm some damage and keep applying pressure. The missiles are pretty frustrating to deal with, and the amount of Evo shields you can farm up is pretty underrated, so don't underestimate the power of this ability. There's a lot of different neat tricks for this, but starting with something you are going to want to avoid more times than not, do not fly straight up into the air just to shoot the rockets at enemies. This barely adds any distance to the rockets, and the only thing it's going to do is waste your fuel usage and make yourself much easier to attack. Of course, there can be moments where this is useful to do, but in general, just don't do it. Another massive mistake is poor use of the rockets, and mostly this comes down to accidentally stunning yourself. When using the tactical, it takes a minute for the rockets to actually go out, so if you do move behind an object while they are firing, you're gonna hit yourself. Take care when using the missiles if you are near an object or if you are near a building. That being said, if you are behind relatively low objects, something like a box or something easily climbable, you can actually activate the rockets to send them to the other side without taking damage. Looking straight at the object and hitting the tactical doesn't work, you will still hurt yourself, but if you look down and then use the rockets, this actually sends them up a little bit higher and you will get them over most objects that are relatively lower around your head height. It's a great little tactic if you are in a one-on-one -on -one or a one-on-two -on -two or any close range fight with enemies if they are on the other side of an object. While the outdoors is where the rockets shine, the rockets can work indoors depending on the height of the building, but if you need to use it in a pinch, crouching while indoors to send the rockets out is a viable strategy depending on the location if the building is a little bit shorter. Forcing movement is key with the tactical as really no one wants to take damage from the missiles even if it isn't the most effective like an arc star. Even if you can pop the tactical at enemies behind a rock, more times than not they are going to run out which will basically give you a free opportunity every 30 or so seconds to get some shots on enemies that might be camping it up or if you are in a stalemate during an end game. A massive combo and trick is to pair this up with an arc star. Valkyrie herself can do this alone but if you toss an arc down and missiles at the same time there are moments where you can get both to connect and do massive damage an even better way is to coordinate with your squad as you can use the missiles while they throw the grenade making it something very difficult for a lot of enemies to avoid the missiles can also be used to break doors on buildings aiming slightly in front of the building or door will be best but if you can connect rockets it will break the door and allow you to fire on enemies without you needing to go up to that door to break it down or using a grenade if you do hold your rockets and you decide you don't want to use them you can just pop your jetpack to stop the use of the rockets not always necessary but it's something that you should know another very situational thing that is worth having in your arsenal is the reverse missile launch if you are getting chased by enemies you can look down to the ground hold your tactical and then jump while releasing the missiles this will send out the missiles backwards and it could slow down a chasing enemy it's not always going to be useful but it's something that can be done and i would recommend practicing this in the firing range however something incredibly useful to your game is glitch energy if you haven't tried it yet what are you waiting for glitch gives you the necessary energy to give yourself a boost of focus with no jitters i have been using more and more of their flavors and they are all incredible check out the latest azure infusion for a delicious raspberry lemonade whether you want some energy or just a delicious drink grab some and be sure to use code temporovision for 25 percent off all your orders i've never been more satisfied not only with them as a company but all the folks over there at glitch they're doing truly amazing things thanks to them for sponsoring the video and being a continual partner around here if you are looking to dive right into battle then there is no better ultimate ability in all of apex than the skyward dive this ultimate allows valkyrie and her squad to rapidly redeploy from any outdoor location with the appropriate vertical clearance to basically anywhere around her valkyrie's ultimate has a super friendly three minute recast timer and more times than not this is going to allow you to get multiple jumps a game the great thing with valk's ultimate is that it will work in conjunction with her passive so you can't find out who is around as you are landing back down to the ground because of this sometimes just using valk's ult to look around to see who is nearby is a really solid tactic to give yourself and your team a little bit more intel on how you might want to play out that match. There's a lot of really great ways to use the ultimate, but I do want to start off by stating sometimes using her ultimate really is just not needed. If you know you are going to reveal yourself and the team or take unnecessary damage by ulting, don't do it. When landing and coming out of her ultimate, you will not have your weapons drawn, which does mean your landing location is very critical to your success. This is even more so during the end game when there are a lot of teams around especially in ranked a pretty viable strategy during end game is to just pop her ultimate and then float in the air as enemy teams fight it out below you again it really depends on your
on your positioning in the match, but this is something to keep in the back of your mind as a viable strategy. Obviously, the smaller the circle, the harder it is to rip that Valk ultimate, so you gotta be very aware of where you are activating the ultimate in relation to your enemies. If you do get shot while preparing to launch, you will not be able to blast off. The ultimate will be canceled, and your timer is gonna be reset back down by 25% to 75% of the charge. You can also manually cancel the ultimate, and your charge will still reset to 75% if you do change your mind, and the ring damage will not cancel her ultimate usage. And speaking of the ring, a pretty solid tactic is to drop a heat shield on an area of height and then use the ultimate, as you won't take damage as you charge up and blast off. If you want to take this one step further, Gibraltar's dome shield is an incredible tool to get Valkyrie's ultimate off. Drop the dome and then get ready to launch. But there is a very huge mistake I will find players make, and this is the dome and the Valkyrie ultimate combo. The problem is that using Gibraltar's dome shield before to get the Valkyrie off is nice, and if you need to, then you gotta do it that way. But it's better yet to save that dome shield for when you are landing. Right as a team lands from the skyward dive, dropping a dome shield instantly helps for a ton of survivability in high areas, and it's something that you really want to think about before you do rip that Valkyrie. Another trick is that you can use Newcastle's shield for cover when launching, but generally this is a little bit less successful because you really are only protecting the Valkyrie and from one angle. Launching near high areas, like on Stormpoint specifically, is a pretty major thing to be aware of. On this map specifically, you generally want to launch as close as you can to the high mountains or rocks as possible. Doing this lets you get over those formations with relative ease, while if you launch from a few meters away, you aren't going to be as successful and you might not be able to cross them. Additionally, the ultimate's height is relative to your location, so launching from roofs of buildings or at high points is going to be the way to go, so you can just clear more area and get a little bit further around and just have more space to travel. When you are flying, you can also use Valkyrie's emotes if you do have them to increase your chances of not getting hit by fire. It's a small thing, but it can matter quite a bit depending on the situation. Truthfully, the biggest thing with her ultimate is just understanding when to use this ability and where you are going ahead of time so you can have ample communication to your squad either through pinging or talking it over. If you want an even better way to find success, you do need to hop into the community discord. Don't play with those randoms because we know they suck. The real benefit of the ultimate kind of has two different ways of thinking depending on what mode you're playing. For ranked, increasing survivability and better rotations are key, but for pub smashing, flying from squad to squad and getting high kill games is really where it's going to shine. Due to pubs dying so fast, I highly recommend running with ultimate accelerants in your inventory so you can use this ultimate as much as possible. This does bring us to the fact that if you are looking at what legends you might want to pair up with Valk, you may want to take a look at Watson. She can carry lots of ultimate accelerants and she could hand them off to you and of course we do have the aforementioned gibraltar and newcastle but beyond these two you could also look at bangalore because their smokes could be away so you can get that ultimate off while valkyrie's movement is top notch you will want to be aware that she does have some major issues with two huge movement techniques in apex this is both bunny hopping and wall jumping unless you are extremely on point with these movement techniques you're going to activate valkyrie's boosters and you won't really be able to do these techniques it doesn't matter too much but if it's something that you do like to do often you just got to be aware of this. Valkyrie in today's meta is no surprise if you have been playing Apex for any amount of time. She is a killer legend, a force to be reckoned with, and absolutely in the conversation of a top three legend, if not the best legend in all of Apex. Check out this video right here if you want to master your game. Happy gaming, legends.